Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod review and today we're checking out a brand new melee weapon pack, that being the classic melee pack by the Fried Turkey and HCGX Grill as part of the Capital Wasteland Project roadmap. This mod is going to add in a bunch of classic melee weapons from Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. 11 to be exact, there are 9 regular melee weapons and 2 uniques. Now all of these will be added into the leveled list, at least the standard versions of the weapons will be, and the uniques will be placed out in the world for you to find as a part of a sort of scavenger hunt. Now you may recognize some of these mods as they did appear already in the big Project Mojave mod, but in order to use those you had to have Project Mojave, and that's not suitable for every load order. Now this mod is available as a standalone release and it is integrated into the Commonwealth, so you will actually find these weapons in your game without needing to go over to a completely new world. This makes it an excellent mod for people who like having those classic weapons added to their leveled list, and it means that it's now able to be used by Xbox users, as Xbox users could not have Project Mojave, but now they can have a lot of the pieces of it as standalone mods. And I gotta say, the weapons are presented in a very excellent manner. They look just like the originals, but brought to a new higher standard and quality, and they fit perfectly in Fallout 4's world. They should have been there in the first place in regards to a lot of these. Some of them are a bit of a duplicate. For example, we have a new version of the baseball bat and the Chinese officer sword, which are technically the old version from Fallout 3, but have been updated to Fallout 4's graphics, so you can really pick and choose which one you want to use, or you just use them both and have a little bit more variety in your game, which is my preference as usual. And much like a lot of the vanilla Fallout 4 weapons, these weapons do have modifications. Now, not every single one has a modification. For example, some of the uniques, like the Nuka Breaker, just don't have modifications, and so there's no real need to modify it at a weapons workbench, but more standard weapons like knives and baseball bats do have modifications over at the weapons workbench, and we'll talk about that more in detail later on in the video. Now, like I said, these weapons are fully added to the leveled list, and they will spawn exactly where they would make sense to find melee weapons, which is great to have another new melee pack so that we could have even more weapon diversity. You can also purchase these weapons from vendors, of course, just like you would any weapon in vanilla Fallout 4. Now, truth be told, these weapons don't bring anything crazy when it comes to stats or modifications. They really feel like vanilla weapons, but for some people, I think that's perfect. At least it is for me. As you know, I always talk about variety. I love having variety in my game, and this mod does that perfect. So, enough rambling. Let's go ahead and jump in game and talk about exactly what you're getting when you download this thing, as there's a good bit to cover here. Alright, now let's talk about every single weapon in this pack. Now we're going to be going through these pretty quick since there are 11 weapons to go through instead of just one, so I won't cover every single detail. Not to mention I'm re-recording this since I just did this whole section with the maxed out Big Leagues perk, so all of these stats were wrong in terms of base stats, so that's fun. Anyways, here's the 9-iron. This is one of the most basic weapons in this pack. It's a pretty standard golf club. It has no upgrades at the weapons workbench. It has a base damage of 28 and a swing speed of slow. Again, this thing's super simple, but there are definitely some cooler weapons in this pack as we move forward. We then have the baseball bat. This is going to be the Fallout 3 style of baseball bat. Also, Fallout New Vegas, technically. Functionally, it's exactly the same as the Fallout 4 baseball bat. The exact same attachments at the weapons workbench, the same stats, I'm pretty sure. It just has a slightly different look. Then we have the cattle prod, something used to smack your Brahmin with. This thing has a base damage of 20 and a swing speed of medium, and actually has some pretty cool attachments over at the weapons workbench that we'll get into later. The chainsaw, definitely one of the coolest weapons in this pack. Really happy that they decided to go with the full on classic look of this thing from Fallout New Vegas. I really like the chainsaw. The classic chainsaw is just so goofy. It fits the animations perfect, and I just like it a lot. They could have gone any direction with it, but I'm glad that they made it look as classic as possible. This thing has a base damage of 20. Of course, it swings very fast since it is a chainsaw, and it has some cool attachments over at the weapons workbench. The Chinese Officer Sword is pretty simple. It is just a remodeled Chinese Officer Sword. It's pretty much the same. I think the stats are the same, and it doesn't have any weapon attachments at the weapons workbench, but it looks pretty neat. Then we have Gehenna, the first of the unique weapons in this pack. Now, this one is one of a kind. You won't find it added to the level list. You actually need to go out and find this thing. It has a base damage of 71 with an additional energy damage of 13, a swing speed of medium, and a value of 1,200 caps. 
And this thing has no upgrades because it is a unique weapon, but it's still really cool. Now, really quick, one thing about the shish kebabs available in this pack is they do have the attached backpack that holds in the fuel for this thing, just like it did in the classic Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. It's just a little piece of uh, attention to detail that I really appreciate that Fallout 4, for whatever reason, was just missing with its heavy weapons and unique melee weapons. Moving on, we have the Katana, a pretty standard Katana. This one is one-handed, has a damage of 27, a swing speed of medium, and some cool upgrades at the weapons workbench. Then we have the standard little kitchen knife, something that was missing from the vanilla Fallout 4. I, I don't know why we didn't have one. All we had were combat knives, and anytime they set up a little scenario where people were cutting food, they had combat knives instead of kitchen knives. Just a weird little thing, not sure why this wasn't in the base game. But this has a base damage of only 6 and a swing speed of fast and no modifications at the weapons workbench. Then we have the second unique in this pack and that is going to be the Nuka Breaker, which many of you will recognize from Fallout New Vegas' Gunrunners DLC. This thing has a base damage of 54, a swing speed of slow, and a value of 420 caps. No modifications at the weapons workbench because why would it? What could you even add to this thing? It's absolutely insane that it's being used as a weapon in the first place. But you can, and that's all that matters. Then we have the Ripper, the classic style of the Ripper. I love this thing. It's so janky and jagged, and I just absolutely love the classic design. It looks great. This thing has a base damage of 51 and a swing speed of very fast, of course, and it does have a couple of attachments over at the weapons workbench. Then we have the standard Shish Kebab, which has a base damage of 59 and a swing speed of medium. Unlike its unique counterpart, this one does have an upgrade at the weapons workbench. We'll get into that later, but yeah, that's how this one works. And to be honest, I kind of like this one a bit more than the unique, at least in terms of visuals. I like the colors on this and the blue fuel tank, whereas the other one is pretty much all like a sort of bronzy color. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about all of the attachments available in this mod. Now I know what you're thinking, 11 weapons, that's a ton of attachments to go over, but I promise it's not. Some of these weapons don't even have attachments and the ones that do typically don't have a lot. So for starters, the nine iron has no attachments. See how quick we're getting through this already. Moving on, we have the baseball bat. Now this one actually does have, I think the most attachments of any of the weapons, but that's because it uses the vanilla attachments for the standard baseball bat. So you'll recognize a lot of these immediately. Not really anything new here, it just has a slightly different look to the baseball bat. And you can change out the skin from dirty to maple or clean. So, there you go. With the cattle broad, we do get some cool unique attachments. For example, we can add spikes to this thing that look very menacing and deadly. And then you can also add on some attachments like electrified, electrified copper, and heated coil. Pretty neat. Then we have the chainsaw. The chainsaw has the option to add on carbide teeth, which are just going to look a little bit sharper and nastier. And then we have a frame. We can have standard red frame or the alloy frame, which is yellow, and will decrease the weight of this thing. Then we have Gehenna. No attachments for this one. It's a unique weapon. It doesn't get any love. And then we have the Katana. This thing has the option to add in the authentic blade, which will increase damage. And then you can also change out the material of the grip. You can have the authentic grip, which is black, the authentic red grip, the red grip, and the standard material. So it's really up to you as to which colors you like. Personally, I like the red and gold. Then for the Ripper, we do have the option to add on an upgraded motor, which will increase damage and change the color to black. From there, we can move over to the regular Shish Kebab, which actually does have an attachment. And that's just going to be the extra flame jets, which will increase the damage. So yeah, I think that's relatively everything for the classic melee pack. There's a lot going on here, but nothing crazy. And honestly, I think that's perfect for what this mod is trying to achieve. This adds in some classic weapons, specifically melee weapons, which is a pretty lacking category on the Nexus. And there's a whole bunch of them. They all fit. They're very lore friendly and they're added to the leveled list. So you'll find these things out in the world on appropriate enemies, which I like a lot. It's going to spice up the game, spice up the weapon variety and add some of your classic favorite weapons from Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. You really can't lose here. Again, this is standalone from Project Mojave, which means you don't need that for this to work, and it's available for both PC and Xbox, so just about anybody can enjoy this thing, except of course PlayStation, and if at this point you're asking why it's not on PlayStation, then you're really, really out of the loop. Alright, with that out of the way, thank you guys so much for watching, big shout out to all my patrons for making videos like this possible, you guys are awesome, thank you so much for your support every single day. If you're at all interested in supporting the Patreon, you can go check it out, you get early access to my mods as well as special Discord roles and a couple of other neat features, but that is completely optional. You guys support me enough as it is here on YouTube, and I appreciate every single one of you for it for watching these videos. 
Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to drop a rating, leave a like if you liked it, leave a dislike if you didn't. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed the video and you want to stick around for more. We do these videos pretty often, so you'll get these a whole lot if you do subscribe. Thank you guys again one more time, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace!